it's very important for you to become aware of that um, conditioning that you have, of the distress or the trauma that you have, because that is the starting point for everything. If you have an underlying belief about fear and guilt and shame, that is your starting point. And it can either become toxic where you are diverting your attention from, from what actually needs your attention. You're diverting that and either, you know, shaming, blaming, complaining about other people or about other things, which is also just part of the diversion. And that needs your attention. So the starting point, you need to become aware of what your starting point is. Of when you, for example, go out and buy stuff, you need to know why you're doing that. What are you reacting? When you open the fridge, you need to become aware of why do you do that? And what you eat, you need to become aware of why. If, when you exercise, you need to become aware of why. Because the starting point is shaping everything in your life. And that needs a lot of awareness. It's also because if you have any kind of repressed trauma, that is shaping your personality. And when we move into the third fetter, what we're working with here, um, that repressed personality will surface. And, and trauma is um, it's not dangerous at all to look at. Trauma does not need to be solved. Trauma needs space. And trauma needs compassion and love and a lot of acceptance. It just needs to be there. It needs to be, you know, like I talked about, we're going into the room, see the house, that's the non-self. You go into every single room, you turn on the light and you look at everything in the room. So there's no part of you that you no longer have an issue with is there. No matter what people say about you, you're completely fine because you've been in the room. People are allowed to say whatever they want about you because you know that it's true. You are everything. How can you limit yourself? How can you believe that you can only be one thing so you don't go like, no, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not cheap. I'm not cheap. I'm very, very generous. I'm, I'm very generous. I, I often donate things. I'm not cheap at all. You need to be in a space where when people call you cheap, you can go like, yeah, I am super cheap. Want to hear about it? Because you know that you can only be generous if you can also be cheap. You are both at the same time. You are everything at the same time. When you believe that you're only one thing, I'm always kind towards everyone. Oh my goodness, sweetheart. That's something you need to look at. There's something you need to look at. You need to also embrace you being an utter twat because you're everything at the same time. If there are parts of you that you do not want to be, then you need to look at it. Because there's an identification with that. Um, if you need to explore your twatty personality sides, then do that. Go out and see what that, <laughs> how that you know influences you. You know, taking the biggest part of par piece of the pie or something like that. See how that works out for you. It's just to look into it, to feel into that identification that you have, because you need to embrace everything. You are everything. You cannot only be love. If you believe that you're only love, you need to look into hate and resentment. You need to embrace the part of you that is full of hate and resentment. Um, because you're everything at the same time. Now, I'm not saying that you should go out in life and be a twat. You can just be a twat in your thoughts. You know, that's enough. And a lot of times when we're just, you know, uh, hateful or resent re resentful, um, towards people in our thoughts, it gives you a great indication of the identification that you have. So um, the starting point is very important to become aware of for you to embrace everything because you are everything. You're not only one thing. If you are, you need the other leg to stand on. It's yin yang. You need both legs to be in balance. And it's not that there's that you should only be kind or only be hateful. There's a middle way. There's a middle way. And that middle way can only be found if you have entered the room, turn on the light, and you accept and acknowledge all of it. You are all of it. Another part of the starting point is also, and I said that before, you can't always be happy. You know, sometimes you're not happy. You can't always be um, compassionate. Um, 
or always be loving. You can, however, always be kind. Because kind is um, it's like, a, a, like the foundational go-to um, starting point that you can decide for yourself to have. Um, you can b- decide to always be kind. That, that the, the, the starting point for, for your thoughts, let's say, they spring from a, uh, from a place of kindness where you are exploring the, the, the parts of you that you do not accept and that you do not want from a space of kindness. And that means that you do this for you to achieve your freedom and become richer. Um, to explore who you are as a person and, be- and, and attain your freedom. And that can be done from a kind place. So look into your thoughts. Is it possible for you to be kind towards yourself? Because for a lot of people, they can't. Um, a lot of people can't be kind to themselves. If you listen to your thoughts, you might be talking to yourself in a way that's very, very abusive. You would never, ever speak to other people like that. You would never, ever you know, do like that as you do with yourself. You never laugh at them as you do of yourself. Um, so look into that. Look into why there are certain rules that apply to you and other rules that apply to other people. Is it possible for you to be kind in your thoughts towards yourself and towards others? Is it possible for you to to create that space for errors to happen where it's completely fine? I mean, we're human beings, you know? If you can't create a space where it's okay for people to be who they are, you have a foundation in shame. You live by rules that are so restricted that there's no space for you at all. And you are full of shame. So see if you can expand yourself into into a starting point uh, of kindness. Where no matter what happens, it's okay. It's okay. If you succeed or don't succeed, it's okay. And the reason why I choose kindness, I can always hear, I, I can you know, almost hear uh, the comment section going uh, about me choosing kindness to be the thing f- to have as a starting point. Um, the reason is that if you, if your starting point is about kindness, if you choose that your starting point is about kindness, no matter what happened, you have um, an open space where, where that's okay. Um, you could also say that it could be compassion. It's just compassion is a bit more loaded um, than kindness, at least in my opinion. That's probably my identification. You look into yours. And I just want to, you know, make a little intermess or a little bracket here and saying that uh, I don't know if you are familiar with the Heart Sutra, uh, the Pranya Paramita in Buddhism. There's a sentence there that I absolutely love. I love the entire sutra, but there's a sentence there. And it's, it's where you get to that point of your awakening where you are freed of all delusive hindrances and you're rid of the fear bred by it. If you really think about that sentence, being freed from all delusive hindrances, what delusive hindrances do you have in your life? What delusive hindrance do you have? And then being rid of the fear bred by it. So you have a delusive hindrance, there's something in your life that's completely delusion, but it is a hindrance, it is a stick on the wheel. That is there because of fear. You're you're fearful of what will happen when you start to rock that boat. And that's the third fetter. For me, that sentence or that, you know, part of the sutra has always been about the third fetter. Freed of the lucid hindrances and writ by the fear bred by it. Yeah.